Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hey guys, ABX here and welcome to another guide. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Holy Paladin for Patch 8.3 Arena. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a multi-rank 1 Holy Paladin, consistently playing at the top of the ladder for many years now. In this guide, we're going to cover talents, essences, azurite traits, trinkets, and the new corruption system, and of course your rotation and playstyle for a Holy Paladin. Starting off with talents, we'll use a solid baseline and then discuss any changes you might want to make depending on what comp you play or face inside of Arena. A good baseline will look like this. Bestow Faith, Cavalier, Fist of Justice, Devotion Aura, Holy Avenger, Sanctified Wrath, and Divine Purpose. Now that we have a good baseline, let's take a look at what situational talents you could use and why. Crusader's Might could be taken for more damage with Holy Shot. However, this will make you oom faster as Bestow Faith is a very mana efficient spell, only take this if you want to play super aggressive. Moving on to the second row, Cavalier is good if you want to play offensive and push in a lot, which also makes it a solid pick versus melee cleaves that will look to train or swap to you in order to kite them. However, when facing certain teams where you won't be pushing in as much, such as RMX or Caster Cleave matchups, Unbreakable Spirit can offer more value to reduce the cooldown of your Divine Protection and Divine Shield. Moving on to the third row, Fist of Justice is a standard pick, which gives you more frequent access to your Hodge. However, Repentance can be a good pick when playing with casters that won't DR your Repentance. For example, Warlocks, Shadow Priests, or Boomkits. Repentance is also fairly strong in twos as you're able to create and set up long CC chains with this while bursting the other target down. This is usually used on the enemy healer to create deadly setups. Blinding Light, on the other hand, is an alternative pick that can be good when playing with a melee cleave or when playing setup compositions such as RM Pala or Ret Rogue H Pala since these compositions generally have a lot of stuns already. The last adaptation to your talent that you might want to consider is on the level 90 row. Avenging Crusader is a good alternative pick that lets you do healing while doing damage. However, keep in mind that overall this provides both less HPS and less damage than Sanctified Wrath while also costing 10k mana whenever it's used. The only time this is useful is when playing with the Vision of Perfection Major Essence, which will then have a chance of proccing Avenging Crusader, allowing for more AoE healing without spending any mana. This could prove useful in long dampening games versus Dot Cleaves. Moving on to PvP talents, there's one PvP talent that you never want to play without. This is of course, Light's Grace. This not only buffs the healing on your Holy Light, but also leaves a 5% damage reduction on the target healed by Holy Light, stacking up to 3 times. Trust me, you never want to play without this. Divine Favor is another PvP talent that you will run with most of the time. The only time you would not use this talent is when playing Conflict and Strife as your major essence, which then gives you Divine Favor, allowing for the use of another PvP talent in its place. Ultimate Sacrifice will be your third PvP talent in most games. You can opt to not play with this when facing a dot comp, which won't have that much burst, when facing melee cleaves and you want to play aggressive, or when playing twos. Blessed Hands is a good pick when not using Ultimate Sacrifice against melee cleaves, as it gives you two Blessing of Protections and two Blessing of Freedoms to kite. It's also the standard pick when facing melees in twos, as you won't use Ultimate Sacrifice often in twos. Divine Vision is good versus Shadow Priest teams to reduce their pressure. You can play without Ultimate Sacrifice versus Shadow Priest teams and opt to play Divine Vision instead to reduce their overall pressure by a ton. Cleanse the Weak could be useful against classes that dot multiple targets such as Boomkins, Elemental Shamans, Shadow Priests, Warlocks, DKs, and even Survival Hunters and Assassination Rogues. However, to play this talent, you'll have to give up a PvP talent which makes it a very rare pick unless you want to run a very defensive build with Conflict and Strife as your major essence to use this as a fourth PvP talent. The last and by far the most fun PvP talent that you can use is Avenging Light. This talent is rarely used in threes, but it can create a ton of pressure in twos. You'll swap this out for Blessed Hand or Ultimate Sacrifice, and you will give up some of your survivability to deal a ton of damage with your Holy Light, and this can create a ton of pressure when targets are stacked up and can allow you to close out twos games very quickly when playing offensively. Moving on to Essences, Holy Paladins have a ton of options to choose from in both the major and minor slots. For your major slot, your go-to Essence for healing and survivability will be the Vitality Conduit. Vitality Conduit is insanely powerful for all healers in the major slot. You can use this when you need extra healing output or an extra defensive against teams with long CC chains such as Hunter teams or RMX compositions. The amazing thing about Vitality Conduit 
is that it can be used before a CC chain or even when you get locked out of your holy school, making this essence a must-have for healing output. However, avoid taking this in either your major or minor slot against dot compositions as you can quickly fall behind in healing once dampening kicks in. Next up from the major slot is Crucible of Flame. This will be your offensive pick used in twos most of the time and also in some threes compositions when playing aggressive strategies such as when playing R Impala or an aggressive melee cleave to close out games quickly. Crucible of Flame can deal a ton of damage with its second and third stack, allowing you to dish out a lot of damage when stacking this essence up before your next kill window. Next up for your major slot is Vision of Perfection. This will give you the best HPS output in PvE, and the same rule applies in PvP. However, this talent is RNG based, which reduces its value in PvP. You could opt to run this when you don't need Vitality Conduit in your major slot and don't want to play offensive with Crucible of Flame. Vision of Perfection in your major slot is really good when playing with Avenging Crusader though. The only time that you want to do this is when facing a Dot Cleave and you expect the game to be extremely long. This will allow for some AoE healing with Avenging Crusader without spending any mana. Our last option for the major slot is Conflict and Strife. This can be picked for the extra versatility when stunned and also gives you Divine Favor, allowing you to pick up another PvP talent. Honestly, you won't use this all too often as the Crucible of Flame and Vitality Conduit simply offer more value. The only time that you might want to consider Conflict and Strife is when you know that you'll be getting swapped too frequently and can't get any value out of Vitality Conduit or when looking to free up a PvP talent. Okay, moving on to the minor essences, there are two that you never want to run without. These are Vision of Perfection and Conflict and Strife. So when not playing with these in your major slots, you'll want to use them in the minor slots instead. The extra versatility from Conflict and Strife increases your versatility to increase your healing, damage, and damage reduction. Vision of Perfection, on the other hand, decreases the cooldown of your Avenging Wrath. Your third minor slot will then be Vitality Conduit most of the time when it's not played in the major slot for passive healing. Once again, avoid running this Essence versus Dot Cleaves though, as you will fall behind in healing once dampening kicks in. You could opt to swap out Conflict and Strife or Vitality Conduit for the Ever Rising Tide instead in dampening games where you expect to run out of mana eventually, for example when facing a Demon Hunter team or a Dot Cleave. This gives a nice boost to Intellect for damage and healing when it procs, or the mana back from it is also nice with a chance to proc both at the same time. This gains even more value when low on mana by giving mana back more frequently. Last up in the minor slot is the Formless Void. You could play this if someone on your team is using Crucible of Flame or Reaping Flames often as it will give a passive intellect boost whenever someone on your team uses it in essence. On top of that, it also gives 10 corruption resistance, which means this essence might be good to pick up if you're running with high corruption levels. All right, in the next section of this guide, we'll be looking at any pieces of gear that you want to get, stat priority, Azerite traits, and of course the new corruption system. Starting off with stat priority, you want to aim for around 40% critical strike before anything else. Crit is honestly amazing for paladins. It boosts both your damage output and your healing, allowing for big judgments and holy shock damage, or simply gives you more infusion of light procs in order to heal with those fast cast holy lights. Haste and versatility have equal value. Haste reduces your casting time and global cooldown, while versatility increases your damage and healing output and also makes you tankier. Mastery should always be avoided in PvP. For your Azerite traits, you want to aim to get 3 Indomitable Justice, 2 Glimmer of Light, and 1 Light's Decree. Indomitable Justice increases damage output of Judgment, allowing for big judgments to finish a target or create pressure for your team. Glimmer of Light provides a Hot or Dot, depending on how Holy Shock is used. Glimmer of Light provides some extra HPS or damage, and can also be used to keep healers in combat from far away. However, keep in mind that this can also break CC. Lights Decree is a ret trait that is picked up since it increases the uptime of your Avenging Wrath by 5 seconds. This however cannot be stacked, which is why you're only running with one. To use this trait, you'll have to spec ret and pick it up before swapping back to holy. Most minor traits are not noteworthy apart from having one gallant steed to reduce the cooldown of your divine steed. Moving on to trinkets, there are two which outshine most other trinkets by far. These are of course, the Forbidden Obsidian Claw, and the Revitalizing Voodoo Totem. The Claw is honestly an insane trinket for pressure, using this at the right time can quickly get you kills or create a ton of pressure during setups, while also giving you mana back each time the dot ticks. The Voodoo Totem is an insane HPS trinket that you can use while locked on cast or before a setup. This will give the target a huge stacking hot, which will heal for a ton making it a must-have trinket. If you can get a DPS caster to trade you a Rock Crusher Voodoo Doll, this can be a very good trinket when trying to play really aggressive since you can run both the Forbidden Obsidian Claw and a Rock Crusher Voodoo Doll. However, this trinket can only be looted as a DPS, so good luck convincing your friends to trade this trinket to you. For defensive trinkets, both the Emblem and Safeguard are solid defensive options when you expect to get trained down. And the last trinket that we're going to cover is the Gladiator Spike. 
which could prove useful when every member on your team runs with it. The Gladiator Spite allows you and your team to create deadly setups when all three team members are using it, allowing for quick kills on targets or another way to set up kill windows. Moving on to Corruption, first up is the Severe, Strike Through, and Versatile Corruption. Severe is fairly good for Holy Paladins. It increases your critical strike from all sources by either 6, 9, or 12%. This is good for both damage and healing, and the same line of thought also applies to the Versatile Corruption. Strike Through increases your damage and healing of all critical strikes by 2, 4, or 6%. Since Holy Paladins rely on critical strikes for both healing and damage, this is a nice corruption to use. Next up is Glimpse of Clarity. This reduces the cooldown of your next spell cast by 3 seconds. This could be timed with Holy Shock or Judgment for big damage or healing output. The problem with it is that it's really RNG, and you have to keep your Holy Shock or Judgment at the ready for when it procs. The same goes for Ineffable Truth. Holy Paladin is a cooldown based class, so a corruption that reduces the cooldown of your spells is fairly nice. The proc rate on this is fairly low, but when stacking multiple Ineffable Truths, you could potentially reduce the cooldown of your abilities by a ton if RNG is on your side. But if you're unlucky with the Endless Corruption grind, then using an offensive corruption like Gushing Wounds, Infinite Stars, or Twisted Appendage is a solid pick. Gushing Wounds is by far the best damage per corruption value, as Infinite Stars and Twisted Appendage both have their weaknesses. Both recently got nerfed, and Infinite Stars can be dispelled, while Twisted Appendage can easily get killed by the enemy team. Okay, now that we've covered everything from gearing and getting your character ready for Arena, let's discuss rotation. Rotation-wise, Holy Paladin is fairly easy. Your first objective is to keep Beacon of Light active on the target that's being pressured. This so will let you conserve mana while trying to top them throughout the game by refunding 25% of the mana spent on Holy Light and Flash of Light on the target that has Beacon active. Bestow Faith should be used off cooldown as it's your most mana efficient heal and does a decent amount of healing throughout the game. This can also be timed for when you're about to get caught in a CC chain for some small healing while you're sitting through CC. Like Bestow Faith, Holy Shock should be used off cooldown to generate infusion of light procs. These procs are then used on fast Holy Light casts to build up Light's Grace stacks and heal the target back up. Light of the Martyr can be used in between casts or when waiting for Holy Shock to come off cooldown again if you did not get an infusion of Light proc. This can also be used when trying to keep a target at stable health while the enemy team has interrupts ready. Light of Dawn should be avoided most of the time as it is a waste of global. However, when playing threes and your entire team is stacked and you're unable to cast, you should use this for some AoE healing. Last thing to touch on for your rotation is to use Judgment off cooldown. This not only generates pressure, but also reduces the cooldown of your Hodge when playing with the Fist of Justice talent. Alright, now that we've mastered the rotation of Holy Paladin and have all the information on talents, essences, and gear, we can move on to the last section of this guide, which is your playstyle inside of Arena. Holy Paladin is a cooldown healer with a strong cooldown kit to rotate with. This should be done at all times to avoid overlaps, and as the healer, it's your job to control your defensives and call out what's being used next. Blessing of Protection can be used to get rid of offensive cooldowns such as Vendetta or Touch of Death, or can be used on physical stuns such as Kidney Shot, Leg Sweep, and Storm Bolt to remove the stun from either yourself or your partners. Blessing of Freedom should be used on yourself or your team to connect damage or kite the enemy team. This becomes even more important when playing with melees, as they will most likely be slowed throughout the game. Good usage of Blessing of Freedom can create a ton of pressure for your team or allow them to survive more easily. Blessing of Sacrifice should be used on targets during setups that would otherwise kill them or force more defensive cooldowns. You can also use this preemptively to break CC on yourself. Be careful though as the damage dot from Ultimate Sacrifice could easily kill you. After using Blessing of Sacrifice, try to play defensive until the dot wears off. Avenging Wrath is both a defensive and offensive cooldown. This can be used to quickly top your team or to play aggressive during setups. Always make the most out of this cooldown as it's up for a long time and you can use it to create offensive pressure after topping your team. Okay, so Holy Paladins can dish out a ton of damage which allows them to play very aggressive compositions such as R and Pala. During your setups, assist your team with Judgment and Holy Shock damage along with any trinkets or even your Crucible of Flame as you can easily force a ton of cooldowns with this or even score a kill yourself. During your setups, you'll be pushing in looking to land CC with your team. Hammer of Justice can be used often when playing offensive, since you will be using Judgment off cooldown for damage. This means that you can use your stun more often to set up CC chains or extend them when playing with Fist of Justice talent. However, certain compositions allow you to only play aggressively for a short period of time. Compositions like RMX, MLD, most caster cleaves, or even some hunter compositions 
can punish your positioning very quickly by overwhelming you with crowd control or even swapping you. For this reason, you'll spend the majority of the game at a pillar versus heavy CC compositions, avoiding CC and damage. Remember that you're a healer even though you can dish out a ton of damage. Bad positioning will quickly lose you the game as a holy paladin since you're very vulnerable to crowd control. Once your team is able to stop crowd control on you, or they can lock down the enemy team with stuns, you can push in and assist your team with crowd control and close out the game, or force cooldowns and retreat to the pillar once again. Paladin has a strong cooldown kit, but gets punished very quickly. Have good positioning at all times, or you could end up throwing your games. You have no hots, shields, or cooldowns apart from Blessing of Sacrifice to help you out when a CC chain is about to land, so you always need to communicate with your team before pushing in for both damage and CC. Last thing to touch on is Fate Casting. Just like positioning, Paladin gets punished easily by interrupts more than any other healer. You have no hots, shields, or damage reduction outside of Light's Grace, and you only have one school of magic. So getting kicked means that you can't use a single spell. Getting kicked often can quickly result in you losing the game, so practice fake casting a ton. All right, that brings this Holy Paladin 8.3 guide to an end. Hopefully this helped you out, and as always, be sure to plus skill this guide if you enjoyed it, and don't be afraid to leave any questions or comments down below. Thanks for watching.